How's it going, guys? My name is Zach with The Movie Castle, and today we're going to be talking about Piranha 2, The Spawning. I, I think this has a alternate subtitle of, like, Flying Killers or something, which probably more accurate. Um, this movie's from 1981, according to the back of the box, and is directed by James Cameron. Well, kind of. Uh, you see, way back in the day, Italy was a much, much cheaper place to shoot, so a lot of times if Hollywood wanted to crank out a sequel really quick, they would ship it over to Italy. Uh, for a very famous example, think uh, Troll 2 which was an American first movie and an Italian second movie. Now, because they wanted uh, people to think it was more American, they had in their contract that this had to be directed by an American director, or at least on paper, so they got James Cameron, who was then more of a special effects artist. However, a producer of this movie that really wanted to be the director, kind of a bullied Cameron to the side, and as a result, he didn't really direct this movie. It's actually a really interesting story with lots of uh, twists and turns, but uh, James Cameron did a little bit of directing, but it seems like he did uh, more work like building fishes for this movie. Um, but he does seem to have a, a good sense of humor about it now, but it must have been an ordeal. I read through some of the story and they could make a movie just about poor James Cameron, why he was trying to make Piranha 2. Um, he, at one point, actually, uh, they didn't pay him enough, and he was eating leftovers off of uh, uh, room service trays, and that actually made him get really, really sick. And one day, he's lying there in Italy in this intense fever, and he has a crazy fever dream about a metallic skeleton coming at him, coming, uh, crawling towards him, which, when he woke up, gave him the idea for the Terminator, so I'd say it had a happy ending for him after all, and, like I said, um, he seems to have developed a good sense of humor about this movie, so, you know, g good for him on that, but, yeah, this is, a. Uh, more on paper James Cameron than actually James Cameron. I think he did direct a little bit, but a lot of this project was taken from him by the producers, and they did whatever they want. And in turn, this really doesn't feel like a James Cameron movie and really does feel more like a uh, random Italian bee creature feature, which is uh, really what this is. Um, this movie stars uh, Trisha O'Neill and also... Uh, Lance Hendrickson, who would become a frequent uh, Cameron collaborator. Um, but anyway, this movie opens up with some scuba divers attempting to sneak down to the shipwreck and, of course, you know, make out in it, uh, Friday the 13th style. And um, they're in the wreck, they're with each other. They don't notice a bunch of angry piranhas swimming out of this wreck to eat them up. You see, this boat wreck was for a government boat carrying a bunch of young, new piranhas. These uh, are a new breed. But anyway, uh, you cut to the main girl, Anna Kimbrough, who is a scuba diving instructor. She works for this resort, and she actually lives there as well, because she's separated from her husband, except for one scene later where she's living at a random house because of, uh, who cares about continuity. Uh, but anyway, she's living at the resort with her kid because she's separated from her husband and she's taking people on scuba diving instructions. Their instructions are to, uh, get near the wreck and look at it, but they're not actually allowed to go in it because the shipwreck's dangerous. But one of the people in her little party does go in and they find him dead, all eaten up and they don't know what happened. And when they take the body back, the police come and we get to meet Lance Hendrickson, who is a police officer and just so happens to be the husband of the main character, uh, separated. And he is a wacky and crazy character 
He's a over-the-top, in-your-face cop that really just likes to yell at people. Uh, we meet later on, um, well, actually, I think it was before, there's a guy dynamite fishing, and you're not supposed to do that, and Lance Hendrickson comes up and yells at him, but then it's revealed they're actually good friends. He just likes to yell at this guy. So you kind of see his over-the-top uh, character, you know? Uh, but anyway, um, because they're not together anymore, he is not letting her in on the details of this investigation, which prompts her to make her own investigation and try to figure out what's going on. And she meets a new guy in the scuba instructing class who is trying to seduce her and tags along on her investigation. So you get her, her new boyfriend, and Lance Hendrickson doing his own thing, and who knows who this new boyfriend is, and if they can trust him, and Lance Hendrickson certainly doesn't think so. Um, but on top of all that, coming up is The Spawning, from the title. The Spawning is when all these fish swim upstream to go and mate, and because there's a lot of fish in one place, the uh, people at the hotel are going to go and just eat them all up. So, it's a big fish food day, but if you know that there's piranhas in the water, the uh, eating might be going on the other side this time around. Um, so that's your, your countdown mechanism. Um, but there is a bunch of other stuff in this plot that doesn't have anything to do with anything. Um, there's a lady who wants to marry a doctor, and she has her eyes set on this guy. There's uh, two ladies that are seducing this cook so that they can get a, a good dinner on their boat. There's an older lady who is trying to seduce younger men and hitting on a bunch of people. And even their son, the main characters have a son, who has his own plot, which is better than the others, but overall it doesn't have much to do with anything. It leads to them looking for him later because he's in a different spot, but he has a job on this boat and he is falling in love with the boss's daughter. Really, all these subplots are all about love. <laughs> it's kind of weird. Um, but ultimately, they all either lead to a joke or a kill scene or really not much, and this really pads out a lot of the runtime, and you honestly, like, a lot of them start off in the beginning, and then you forget about them for a long time, and every now and then one will pop back up and be like, what was this one? Oh, yeah, yeah, this this story. And it's really a ton of filler that has n very little to do with anything. Uh, later in the Friday the 13th movies, they would start to do uh, vignette kill scenes where people that have nothing to do with anything pop up and get killed, but those are usually very self-contained and uh, quick, and they really got those down pat. Here, they fill up random parts of the movie, and you think they're supposed to be important, and they are not important, and a large chunk of this movie ultimately goes nowhere. Now, the piranhas, the big deal with this one is they fly now. So, the piranhas come out of the water and attack you, and to be fair, if you look at the models, they look really well. Um, a lot of what James Cameron wound up doing on this movie was actually, if I believe uh, correctly, uh, making the models for these. So the models look good. They're not puppeteered or filmed super well. And it also, you know, the piranhas in the first one were technically less powerful, but they were scarier because they were shot well and they built up suspense properly. And that cool little yum 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 editing worked really well. Here, it's just silly piranhas popping out of nowhere, biting someone, and even though they're more powerful, they're not shot as well, so in turn, they're less scary. Um, and they do tie it back to the first one, the random scene where the main girl is at a house instead of her hotel room. She pulls up a projector and looks at the stuff, and she's like, oh yeah, a few years ago they found out about government piranhas, and these are a new breed, and they altered them, and now they do more stuff, and they're more powerful. So they do tie it back to the first movie a little bit, which is always appreciated, because sometimes they ignore it completely. Um, but yeah, they're interesting, just not as uh, good. 
And that's really the thing. If you look at what made the first movie successful, you had very interesting characters for just being, you know, characters in a creature feature movie. They tried to flesh them out. You know, you had the, uh, the main girl who was a detective that would be playing video games, and you had the, the guy who was grumpy but wanted to save his daughter. And here, the characters aren't as well thought out. Lance Hendrickson, of course, is fun because he's Lance Hendrickson, and he does his best with the role and tries to make it, you know, funny and cool. Um, but overall, you don't know them as well, and a lot of them really do amount to nothing. Um, and the, uh, the focus. Like I said, you're focusing on all these random characters. You, you don't really have a sense of direction throughout this movie. The first one, it was going down the river, trying to stop the piranhas. Here, there's the spawning, which is going to happen at some arbitrary time, and no one's really doing anything to stop it. That's why I think, you know, the Flying Killers uh, subtitle is probably more accurate than the spawning, because the spawning is, you know, it's a big event at the finale, but overall, no one's really concerned with it. I mean, there might be a few lines, but it's not, oh man, we have to stop the spawning. There's no sense of tension building to this. And overall, um, I mean, yeah, they kind of know they have to stop the spawning. But in the first one, it was so, we gotta beat these fish downriver. We gotta save the camp. We gotta save the resort. And you do get, you know, some recycled elements. There's another resort here, and the lead character is kind of angry. But overall, it's a really unfocused mess that doesn't build the tension as well as the first one and you don't relate to the characters as well as the first one and the timer is not as good as the first one but overall it's not like it was terrible there's a lot of uh B movie moments that you can get a good laugh at and some incredibly stupid parts where you're like okay that's silly uh some parts that seem to be a reference to alien with the piranha popping out of a person's corpse. Hey, maybe they should just give James Cameron an alien sequel, right? Which they did, and it worked out great. Um, but anyway, um, it's fine. It's cheesy, and it's by no means a good movie, but if you're in the B-movie crowd, there's enjoyment to get out of this ironically. So it's not good on its own, but if you want a movie to laugh at, there's some definite good parts to laugh at here. And to be fair, I did do a quick search after I watched this movie to see if Mystery Science Theater got a hold of it, and sadly they did not, because this would have made a very good Mystery Science Theater episode. But overall, you know, it's fine. For a sequel they literally cranked out, it's, it's okay. But in an ironic way, and not in a legitimately good way. So if you are fans of cheesy movies and if you're a piranha completionist, if you're one of those two groups, cheesy movies, completionist, um, go ahead and watch it. Just don't expect too much. And for the people who are fans of James Cameron and want to see his first movie, this is really only technically his first movie and it's really more, you know, a fun James Cameron trivia than it is looking at his uh, filmmaking style. That wouldn't come about till later. But because of this movie and them not paying him and him getting that crazy fever dream from eating bad food, we did wind up getting Terminator. So this is one of those B movies that not too many people think about, but it's actually historically important because if we didn't put poor James Cameron through all that, he wouldn't have given us Terminator. And that is uh, really important. Uh, anyway, I, I need to watch Terminator again for this channel. That's a, a good movie. I need to do more Cameron stuff. But anyway, this movie's okay. Uh, cheesy movie fans, Cameron fans, Piranha fans. It, it's kind of more of a curiosity and if you want a good laugh. But anyway, uh, to everyone who's watched so far, thank you for watching. To everyone who's liked and subscribed, uh, thank you. You are really helping this channel out. I'll put a relevant playlist at the bottom here, so if you want to see more of my videos, uh, that should be videos that are some way related to it, probably my uh, Creature Features playlist. Um, 
And I do like 95% horror movies on here, so if that sounds like something you're interested in, I recommend uh, sticking around. Anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon.